What's up guys, welcome back to Everyday Money. I don't like to be the doom and gloom guy, but we are looking at very hard times coming for the economy because the economy is facing headwinds that it hasn't faced in decades. If you're a younger viewer, and even me being in my late 30s, I haven't really seen the economic times like this and been, you know, in my adult life and trying to make money and build wealth why things like this are going on. So this could be the first time that you and, and most of my viewers out there are seeing this. Now, what we're dealing with right now is very high inflation. We've had high inflation. We are in a high inflation environment and we probably are going to have high inflation for the uh, near future until the Fed can really get a hold of it with uh, interest rate increases. The thing is, the reason that that happened is because they increased the monetary supply by five times in uh, in two years. And you can't dilute something like that without considerably devaluating uh, the currency and devaluating the buying power of your money. And you guys are seeing this out there. You guys are seeing this in high energy prices. You can see the energy prices are rising for fuel, for gasoline, for diesel. Uh, you're heating your home. If you guys have gotten a gas and electric bill in the last you know month or so, you've probably seen it go up by... 25% uh, from uh, the similar time last year. Food prices are on the rise, you know, and that's every day in your grocery bill. You're, you're able to buy a little bit less with, with every time that you go to the grocery store. And, you know, all that combined with the supply chain issues, just naturally push, pushing up prices on supply and demand is really uh, making inflation take off. Now, the, the solution for that is going to be raising interest rates by the Fed, but that is going to make borrowing more expensive for everyone. It's going to reduce corporate profits, and that is going to weigh on the economy. And with the interest rates going up, one of the biggest things that people are going to see this in is the mortgage rate. If you guys are one of those ones out there that's waiting for a housing crash or waiting for housing to come down to uh, to purchase a house, this is what interest rate increases are going to do to your buying power. Because a $300,000 house right now financed for 30 years at 3% is actually going to cost you about $20 a month less than a $240,000 home financed for 30 years at 5%. So these interest rate hikes are really going to affect people's buying power as far as buying homes, as far as buying vehicles, and then you know credit card stuff. It's, it's all going to cost people more and you'll be able to afford less with every dollar that we buy. So moving forward, while we still right now are in a relatively low interest rate environment, while inflation hasn't been able to really take a huge bite out of our earnings or savings, we need to get our money right before anything gets crazy. Because really at this point, we are, in my opinion, we are sitting at a, at a point where any major disruption in the world could really send things uh, in a bad direction. For example, if war broke out in Ukraine uh, versus Russia, or energy supply, we had an energy supply crisis, it, that could really raise the prices of fuel, food, heating your home. And so what I wanna do is give you guys three ways that we can get our money right and we can get on the right path so that if something does happen or even just dealing with this high uh, inflation, high interest rate environment, that you will be able to deal with that much more effectively. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and this is one of the easiest things to do, is we're gonna cut our spending. And now, I'm usually the type of person that says that I want to increase the income versus cut spending because there's only so much that you can save uh, before you are at a level that you can't cut anymore because you're just into your basic level of expenses for mortgage and utilities and food and such. But there are some low-hanging fruits that you can uh, that you can reduce your spending on and you get ahead of the game in a very quick fashion. And what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna cut everything that's non-essential. And, and we're not in a crisis mode here, so it's not like you have to cut back to the, the bare bones, but just look through the stuff that you're paying on every single month. And the biggest ones are going to be things that you don't even think about, like uh, subscriptions that you subscribe to, like Spotify, Pandora, Hulu Plus, Netflix. There's a ton of things that you can buy on subscription now. And actually with these, uh, with these streaming su uh, subscriptions, you can really almost get them to be as large or larger than a traditional cable bill although you know you are able to pick out exactly what you want to watch versus cable that that brings me to my next point is cable cable television in my opinion is trash it's never anything on that i want to watch and for the most part i can get almost everything through one of those streaming services if you keep one or over the air as far as if i want to watch sports or whatever uh and so cutting your cable bill can save you hundreds a month look at your cell phone plan a lot of these cell phone plans are horribly overpriced uh, for what you get and you can look at one of these virtual mobile operators like cricket or track phone or uh 
uh, any one of the other virtual mobile operators that'll provide you the same or very similar service for a much lower rate. I know I have two lines right now, almost unlimited on Cricket. They run on AT&T's network. It is uh, about $70 a month. It's exactly $70 a month, every single month, no fees, no, no baloney. And that saves me a bunch versus what I was paying with AT&T, which was something like $120 or $140 a month. Now buy store brands versus your name brand items. These are almost identical. A lot of times they're produced in the same exact factory and they will save you a ton of money versus buying the name brand that you pay for the pretty looking box. And when you're buying things, hold off on replacing things that work. If your phone works, it works quickly, you don't have any problems with it, there is no sense in getting the newest phone every time that they put one out. The, the, the things that used to get much better on every release are not doing that anymore. The cameras are, are not getting you know better on every single release like they were between like the iPhone 1, 4, 6, etc. There's a couple more features, but things aren't exactly getting you know better at a rapid pace like they used to be. The same with your uh, with your vehicles. If it still runs, it gets you point A to point B go ahead and just continue to drive that thing as long as it's reliable and as long as it meets your needs because every new car that you buy on average will cost you about $3.75 million when you take into account uh, the money that you could have been investing instead instead of buying that car. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna reduce our spending down to uh, the, the reasonable minimum level that we can before we get on to uh, retiring or uh, refinancing any debts that you might have. So when you're looking at any debts that that you have outstanding. The first thing that needs to go is most of your consumer debt needs to go right now. These are your credit cards. Cause I have $30,000 in credit card debt. Loans for toys like ATVs, uh, motorhomes, uh, boats, things of that nature, cars, and bit, pretty much anything with a rate over three or 4%. Now that lower rate debt, the, you know, if you're down at 1.99 or something like that, or you have a fixed rate debt, on cars or toys or whatever, you, it may be okay to hang on to that as long as the rate is low and it's not a burden to you. And especially if you could unload it at a moment's notice, you know, if, if you could sell it for what you owe on it, or if you already have that money invested somewhere else and if something did happen, you could sell that and pay that off right away. The reason is, is because hanging on to that debt in an inflationary period, the inflation will devalue the balance owed over time. And so it will actually become cheaper to hang on to those over time if you can and if you want to hang on to those items. The thing is, is that anything with a variable rate that, that goes up and down with interest rates has to go immediately. This is your credit card debt. And I can't tell you guys how bad credit card debt is. When they call, I tell them I can't pay it back yet. Credit card debt. Even like a low interest rate credit card might be 18%, but there are plenty of credit cards out there that people are paying on at 24%. That's 2% a month. It's absolutely outrageous. And you need to get rid of that stuff ASAP. Any adjustable rate mortgages. This is where people got into um into trouble during the financial crisis when they tried to refinance these adjustable rate mortgages they couldn't the rate adjusted to a much higher uh, interest rate than they had before and they weren't able to pay it get those uh, adjustable rate mortgages refinanced into fixed rate long-term low interest rate mortgages so that you don't have a surprise with your payment when it goes from you know 2.75 percent up to six percent as the fed raises its uh, its interest rates any HELOCs again with variable rates that stuff it needs to be refinanced into fixed rate debt. The rising rates from the federal government in order to try to fight that inflation is going to cause all of these variable rate uh, lines of credit to go up and it's gonna cost you more every single month. This is very similar to what happened in 2008 with the housing crisis. Last guys, we want to diversify our income so that we're not dependent on one single income source. That job that you have that you think is so secure may not be. You remember when Lehman Brothers went out of business, that was a firm that was around for over 100 50 years and then all of a sudden it was gone in the blink of an eye. So what you want to do is you want to start creating alternate streams of income and this is going to help you if you are, if you are unfortunate enough to lose your job, if you have to take a pay cut or if inflation seriously decreases your buying power. The thing that you can do is uh, you can come up with side hustles, you can come up with uh, passive or semi-passive investments, but you can use skills that you already have right now. If you have a particular skill out there, if you can consult on something, if you're an expert in something, Thing, you can use that to help other folks grow their businesses. If, if you have more of a uh, physical labor type of background, you can cut grass. Lawn care is, is incredibly lucrative. I, when I was doing lawn care 
When I was much younger, I owned a lawn care company. I was doing between $75 and $100 an hour cutting grass only. Not doing mulch, not doing anything like that, just cutting grass. You can detail cars, you can be a handyman if you uh, know how to do things around the house. If you've been thinking about starting a YouTube channel like this one and you've been waiting for your sign, here it is. You know, a lot of you folks out there have individual things that you do, you have hobbies that you do, you have skills that you have that are unique to you and, uh, and people will watch you do Doing whatever it is that you do or whatever it is that you have to talk about and then YouTube will pay you uh, ad revenue after you've reached certain uh, metrics in their in their system you know the thousand subscribers 4,000 hours of watch time but not only will uh, will you be able to make a little bit of money on the side but you'll learn some new skills when I started this channel I didn't really have any skills for for filming for uh, Photoshop to make thumbnails for video editing and I'm still working on those but that will give you new marketable skills that you can potentially use for new streams of income invest in real estate if you can at this time because right now the interest rates are still low you can get low fixed rate loans for uh, real estate that you can rent out either long term or on Airbnb which is what I like to rent uh, out my real estate on it's incredibly lucrative and so now might be the time to take on some good cheap low rate debt in order to uh, buy some buildings to get yourself some semi passive or uh, passive income coming in from real estate and always when you guys are, are developing these multiple streams of income when you're getting paid from your w2 be sure to continue to plow money into the markets because as they go down people are going to panic they're going to say don't put any money in the market you are losing money every time you put it in it continues to go down it's just going to continue to go down the market has never gone down consistently over time it has always only gone up and so every dollar that you put in is going to be buying more shares as it goes down and as the market comes back up it will be worth more money than if it would have just remained at the level that it was before if i'm wrong let's say i'm wrong and none of this happens we have uh you know, good economy from here on out. Inflation doesn't stay around. Uh, the rates don't go up to five or six percent for mortgage rates. Uh, no one loses their job. No one takes a pay cut, and inflation doesn't decrease your buying power. The thing is, is you're still going to be in a much better spot if you do all these things. If you reduce your spending, if you retire uh, or refinance your variable interest rate or high interest rate debt, pay off your credit cards, uh, and then if you diversify your income through uh, through multiple streams of income that you know that we just mentioned or anything else that you come up with, you will be in a much better spot and be much closer to financial freedom at the end. So e either way, it's a win-win for you uh, so that you'll have more money and you'll be more successful and you'll be that much closer to financial freedom. Guys, I want you to take a look at the videos that are on the screen right now. These are going to show you how to invest in stocks, invest in real estate, invest in uh, Airbnbs, save money. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell, hit that like button for me for the YouTube algorithm that really helps me out. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you on the next one.